In this tutorial, I'm going to tell you about the proper signal flow through the master section, but it's important to understand why the signal flow needs to follow a very, very specific set of mastering plugins. And so I'm going to review the mastering objectives. Now, if you've watched any of my other mastering courses here on MacProVideo.com, like Mastering in Cubase or An Introduction to Mastering in WaveLab, then you've already seen this, and so I'm just going to review this for the folks that perhaps started with this course. So typically when I have a mastering client come to me, they say something like, well, make it uh, punchy and shiny and loud. And so they don't use the actual terminology that a mastering engineer or music producer would use, like use a multiband compressor and then use a mastering limiter. They use these adjectives like punchy, shiny, and loud. And that actually works to represent the proper signal flow through the mastering section. In other words, the punchy adjective is going to be some sort of level compression, like a compressor or a multiband compressor, or it could even be tape compression. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. Then the shiny component is some sort of equalization, like with a parametric EQ. And then the loud part of our mastering objective is going to be using a mastering limiter to increase the loudness of the file, and therefore what the human ear perceives as actual volume increase to make the song sound louder. So now that we have gone over some of those mastering objectives, including punchy, shiny, loud, and how that relates to compression, EQ, and limiting, let's talk about how we arrange those plugins into the master section of WaveLab. Now, in a previous tutorial, we added some plugins to our Master Effects section. I added a multiband compressor and the Studio EQ and the Maximizer Mastering Limiter. So I followed that proper signal flow of compression into EQ into limiting. And if I did this wrong, let me explain why this would be a problem if you were to do this wrong. So I'm going to reorder these plugins. So I'm going to drag my maximizer down here to my fourth slot, and I'm going to grab my compressor and bring it down to the third slot, and I have now rearranged the signal flow. So now the equalizer is going to process the audio first, then the signal is going to flow into the compressor and finally the maximizer. The reason why this doesn't work is because a compressor will change the sound based on what you're feeding it. And if you have the compression set up the way that you want, and then you start to adjust the EQ, which is plugged into the compressor, the EQ itself is going to change how the compressor operates. So that's why it's best to put compression first, followed by EQ, and then mastering limiting. And conversely, if I were to add the maximizer up here and reorient it as the very, very first plugin, that certainly wouldn't work. Because part of a mastering limiter's job is to make sure that 0 dB, or the clipping of an audio file, never ever gets exceeded. So if you were to set that parameter here on the mastering limiter, and then send it into other plugins, the problem is that these other plugins could clip, and if they clip, then the output level of your mastering file is ruined. So you always want to adhere to proper effect signal flow. So you would always start with some sort of compression followed by EQ, and followed by some sort of mastering limiter. Now, the type of plugins that you use to achieve those punchy, shiny, and loud characteristics can be widely varied. And so I'm going to show you a few different types of plugins that you can use with WaveLab, including some third-party plugins that I've found to be very, very useful. And we'll start to go through the WaveLab plugins in our next tutorial.